Sup, chooms, how y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. So, sorry uploads have been a bit slow and delayed as of late. I've been a bit busy, but members of the Deutasteroid Master Race rejoice because I've got some glorious news. There is a new study that was just published on using low-dose Deutasteroide for hair loss, and it turns out that Deutasteroide is an even better drug than we originally thought. As many of you chooms already know, Deutasteroid is kind of a strange drug in how it's metabolized by the body, and I've gone over why this is in my previous video on low-dose Deutasteroid, which I'll link below. But just to sum it all up, Deutasteroid has an extremely long half-life of about five weeks, much, much longer than Finasteride, which has a half-life of just about five hours. The long half-life of Deutasteride can actually be a good thing, though, since it means that you can take the drug less frequently than once per day if you want, and it will still be effective just as long as you get the same weekly dose. In other words, you will get the same effect taking 3.5 milligrams of Deutasteride once per week, which is 7 times 0.5 milligrams, as you would taking 0.5 milligrams every day. But that doesn't mean that taking 0.5 milligrams once a week is the same as taking 0.5 milligrams every single day. A lot of people get confused about this. It's the total dose per week that actually matters, though, Chooms. The long half-life just means you don't necessarily need to take the drug every day, though, of course, that is the standard dose and most people do take it every day. We also know that with low-dose Deutasteride, at just 0.1 milligrams per day, you will still get about the same effect on suppressing blood DHT as you get from Finasteride at 1 milligram per day, and we know Finasteride at 1 milligrams per day is already very effective. So, even if you just take one 0.5 milligram capsule of Deutasteride once every 5 days, that is still going to be just as effective in suppressing DHT as taking 1 milligram of Finasteride every single day. That's the reason why some people try to find a middle ground between the Deutasteride Master Race and the Finasteride Peasantry, and they elect to join the Deutasteride Middle Class and use low-dose Deutasteride. But it turns out, Shooms, that there is yet another reason to think about using low-dose Deutasteride for hair loss. It has everything to do with the drug's long half-life. A drawback of this long half-life is that if you do get side effects from Deutasteride, which of course is very rare, maybe even rarer than Finasteride side effects, but if you do get them, it can take months for Deutasteride to actually leave your system. Finasteride, on the other hand, because of its very short half-life, usually takes at most a few weeks for side effects to resolve after stopping it. So that's one of the few advantages the Finasteride peasantry has over the Deutasteride master race. But there is another peculiarity about the metabolism of Deutasteride. It actually has two half-lives. On higher doses, it has the long half-life of five weeks, but on lower doses, it has a much shorter half-life of just three days. So if low-dose Deutasteride needs to be stopped for some reason, it may not take months for it to get out of the system as it does with 0.5 milligrams of Deutasteride. It turns out that the low dose of Deutasteride, where the half-life switches to the very long half-life, is at a dose of 0.5 milligrams per day. Doses less than that have a much shorter half-life. So one big advantage of low dose Deutasteride is that it might have a shorter elimination half-life. So if you do get side effects, you don't have to wait so long for the drug to actually get out of your system when you stop it. Of course, another big advantage is like with most drugs, the incidence of side effects should be lower at lower drug doses. Anyways. There aren't a whole lot of studies on low-dose Deutasteride, so it's definitely great to see researchers actually paying attention to the Deutasteride middle class for a change. So let's go ahead and take a look at this new study that used a low dose of Deutasteride at 0.2 milligrams daily. Okay, so the first thing you should take note of about this study is that it comes from Good Korea, which is a land where a lot of good things come from, like Taekwondo, the Kia EV6 GT, K-pop, and of course, a lot of good hair loss research as well. It's important to realize that Deutasteride at a dose of 0.5 milligrams per day is actually approved for treating hair loss in good Korea and in Japan, unlike in the United States, where technically it is only approved for treating in large prostate. However, doctors here are free to use Deutasteride off-label to treat hair loss, and of course it is commonly used for that purpose and around the world where it's also not approved for hair loss. However, there's one anomaly about Finasteride that I've always found a little bit strange and it's been bugging me for a long time now. It's really strange that when Finasteride was approved for treating hair loss, Loss, it was found that a lower dose was sufficient for treating hair loss than the dose used for treating in a large prostate. With finasteride, the dose to treat hair loss is only 1 mg per day as opposed to the dose of 5 mg per day for treating in a large prostate. Yet, with dutasteride, the same dose is being used to treat both hair loss and in a large prostate, specifically at 0.5 mg per day. So, 
This study tries to answer the obvious question. Can hair loss be treated successfully with a lower dose of dutasteride than 0.5 milligrams per day? It's a question I wish more people would ask because it's a valid one. In a previous study of using low-dose dutasteride that I went over in my previous video on low-dose dutasteride, this study right here, a dose of 0.1 milligrams per day of dutasteride increased hair counts better than finasteride at 1 milligram per day. 0.5 milligrams of dutasteride was superior to 0.1 milligrams of dutasteride dutasteride, but not by a whole lot. So the natural question the authors of this new study raised was whether 0.2 milligrams of dutasteride might actually be the sweet spot, or the Goldilocks dose, where you get similar efficacy to 0.5 milligrams of dutasteride and maybe fewer side effects while we're at it. Anyways, this is a randomized double-blinded placebo-controlled study, which is a top-notch study design, as anyone will tell you. The study enrolled 139 men with antritic alopecia, and the study lasted for 24 weeks. The average age of the men in the study was 39 9.8 years. The researchers used a different system than the usual Hamilton-Norwood system that we're mostly familiar with in order to classify the degree of hair loss the subjects of the study had. It's called the BASP system. That's B-A-S-P. And it's a system that was developed in Good Korea. The system was designed to be used to address both male pattern and female pattern hair loss. So it combines features of both the Norwood system and the Ludwig system for female pattern hair loss. So it's a pretty unfamiliar system to most people, at least in the Western world, at least to me at this, but in this new study, the men all had basic hair loss patterns of M2 to M3 or C2 to C3, which usually translates into at least a Norwood 3 class. So, in the three branches of the study, the subjects were given either 0.2 milligrams of dutasteride a day or 0.5 milligrams of dutasteride a day, or they were given a placebo treatment. It's important to note also that none of the subjects in the study had previously ever taken a 5-air inhibitor, and they weren't on any other hair loss treatments other than the study medications, so they weren't on minoxidil or anything like that. The primary endpoint of the study was the change in hair counts in a 1 square centimeter target area measured by a phototrichogram device. That's a very solid and very objective endpoint. Some other secondary endpoints were assessments by global photographs as well as some self-assessments as well by the subjects. So these were definitely more subjective endpoints, but most hair loss studies look at these endpoints so they might as well have included them anyways. In addition, testosterone and DHT levels were measured at baseline and after 12 and 24 weeks of treatment. Also, the subjects were monitored for side effects. Okay, so enough suspense. What did the study actually show? Well, here's the main result. The graph shows the changes in hair counts after 24 weeks of treatment. 0.2 milligrams of dutasteride is on the left, 0.5 milligrams of dutasteride is on the right, and the placebo group is in the middle. Both dutasteride groups showed statistically better hair count improvement than the placebo group. The actual numbers were an increase of 22.38 hairs per square centimeter in the 0.2 milligram dutasteride group, 5.09 hairs per square centimeter in the placebo group, and 15.86 hairs per square centimeter in the 0.5 milligram dutasteride group. Okay, I can hear everyone out there gasping and saying all at once, whoa, Kevin, are you trying to say that 0.2 milligrams of dutasteride actually works better than 0.5 milligrams? That doesn't make any sense, bro. Well, it was definitely pretty surprising to me too, but it's probably just a statistical fluke. The way the study was designed is that there were half as many men who took the 0.5 milligram dose of dutasteride than there were in the 0.2 milligram dose and placebo branches of the study. Also, when the investigators accounted for drop Outs and looked at the men who took the dutasteride right up to the end of the study, there was no statistical difference between the 0.2 milligram group and the 0.5 milligram group. Still, it's pretty damn impressive that the results of the 0.2 milligram group of dutasteride were so good. Looking at the other study endpoints, 0.2 milligrams of dutasteride was superior to placebo in improving hair growth based on photographic assessments, and it was no different than 0.5 milligrams of dutasteride. Finally, the results of 0.2 milligrams of dutasteride were superior to the results of using a placebo in the subject's self-evaluation of hair thickness, hair texture, and volume. However, the subject's didn't notice a difference in hair growth between 0.2 milligrams of dutasteride and placebo, which is probably because people are just not very good at assessing for themselves the effects of these drugs, and that's why I tell you guys, self-assessments are usually not reliable. Hair phototrichograms are much more objective. So, based on these results, the investigators concluded that 0.2 milligrams of dutasteride per day is equally as effective as 0.5 milligrams per day. Okay, so what about the side effects? Well, this table shows all the adverse effects that were 
were seen in all three study groups. So as you can see, the bottom line here was that even though it looks like there might be a lower risk of side effects with low dose dutasteride versus 0.5 milligrams per day, which is the standard dose, the differences in the groups weren't statistically significant. That includes the placebo group as well, Chooms. So in other words, there were no statistically significant differences in the incidence of adverse effects in all three groups. There's one thing left to look at here, the effects of low-dose dutasteride on testosterone and DHT levels. Here are the graphs showing those results. So on the left, you can see that the serum testosterone level increased slightly after 12 weeks in the treatment groups, though after 24 weeks, there was no difference in the testosterone levels in the dutasteride group versus placebo. On the other hand, the serum DHT levels were suppressed markedly in both dutasteride groups, and this decrease persisted through the 24 weeks of the study. The decrease in serum DHT was greater greater with 0.5 milligrams per day versus 0.2 milligrams per day. Unfortunately though, the article doesn't give the raw numbers, so I can't calculate the percent change in DHT levels in this study. So the investigators concluded that low-dose dutasteride shows promise as an alternative to standard-dose dutasteride with similar efficacy and potentially fewer side effects as well. So my take on this is that this study shows that joining the dutasteride middle class is definitely a valid option and might actually turn out to be the best option for many aspiring hair loss switchers. Of course, this is a small study, but the study design is very good and it goes along with the other research showing the efficacy of low-dose dutasteride that I went over in my earlier video on this topic. So one practical matter is how do you actually get dutasteride at a dose of 0.2 milligrams per day? I mean, dutasteride comes in a gel cap after all. They can't be split like you can with finasteride that comes in a pill form at either one or five milligrams. Well, that is definitely a complicated situation, but here's what you could possibly do. You could try to achieve a slightly higher dose than what was used in the study by taking a 0.5 milligram capsule every other day. That's the equivalent of 0.25 milligrams per day. And I know a lot of people already do that with great success. But based on the results of the new study, maybe someone will come out with a 0.2 milligram dose that doesn't need to be split in order to be achieved. Or maybe someone already has that in good Korea or Japan. But anyways, this is definitely great news for the Dutasteride Master Race that I wanted to share with you, Chums, and I'm very pleased that you watched it on my channel. So anyways, I'll be back with some more content soon. I'll be back with some more Dutasteride content and other hair loss content as well. But thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all again very shortly. God bless.